Hi everyone, I'm Kelly Quinn with Paint for the Wild and today we're going to be learning how to paint this lovely little sea turtle that you see right here. Uh, we're going to be using only a handful of acrylic paints and then we're going to be using three brushes and I'll show you how to not only draw our sea turtle here on this 11 by 14 canvas, but I'll also show you how to color mix and then how to also do complementary colors and do base layer to final details in your sea turtle artwork. So all of this stuff is things that you can buy at your local Michaels, at your Blick art material store. Any kind of art store will have every single one of these materials I'll be using today. So we keep it very simple and it's very to the point and I'll be teaching you a couple things about form, color, and in general, just how to create a complimentary piece inspired by pop art. We're gonna be using three brushes. Two are flat brushes, like these guys right here. You can see. So flat brushes are distinct because of this flat edge they have, and they're very boxy, rectangular, kind of square-like. And you see they're still they're thin on the side. And you can use these for many different techniques. I'll be show, showing them to you throughout this painting, so stay tuned for those. And then finally, we also have our detail brush, which is our little round brush right here. And this will be what we do, our final little highlights, little stuff in the, in the shell, little tiny details in the face. This is our best friend. So now we have our brushes. And like I said, you can get these three brushes at any kind of store, any art store will have them. Then you're gonna need just a nice little rag, whatever you have on hand. Um, I like to use a paper plate and well, I use a couple things. So I use a couple of different palettes. Uh, my main palette is a permanent big boxy palette. Um, but what I like to use for our art classes is just a plain paper plate because it's very simple, very easy for everybody to get a hold of. And it's just a great way if you're just getting started with painting. Um, you don't have to get all of the supplies right off the bat. And then of course we're gonna need a pencil to draw our turtle cup of water and then we're gonna have a handful of colors which I'm gonna be going over in the next bit. Now for this part, we're only going to be using, like I said earlier, only a handful of colors. And those colors are as follows. I'm using golden acrylics. These are my favorite acrylics that I like to use. Uh, but you are more than welcome to use any variety. If you're just starting out, I recommend Blick acrylics um, as well as any of the basic acrylics work fantastic if you're just starting out. Don't need anything fancy when you're just learning. Um, so we're gonna definitely use a yellow. So whatever yellow you can find, I use Hansa yellow, Pyro orange, Quinacridone magenta, which is like a purpley red color. It's fantastic for making really, really cool mixes. Um, and then we're gonna be using our favorites, which is phalo green right here, titanium white, and then phalo blue, particularly green shade. This is nice for underwater marine type artwork. I just find that it has just a little bit of a different hue that gives it more of that feeling of underwater. Um, so now these are the five colors that we're gonna be using. And then of course use our pencil. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and just put a little bit. When you're working on 11 by 14, you don't need a whole ton of paint. You'd rather start with less paint than more because if you use too much paint, then you're just wasting your money. Um, so just be aware of that. Whenever you're pouring your paint, don't over pour, under pour. You'd rather have that option to add more than just to waste it. That's just, um, pro tip there because I've done that many times. It's that awesome magenta color. And then here's this yellow. And then later on we might end up adding a, uh, a couple other colors if we decide that it needs it. But these are, this is our main palette for this painting. So let's hop right in. It's gonna be our reference photo right here. And now we're going to start in with our sketch. So I like whenever you're doing shapes or doing an animal or anything like that, just keep in mind that everything is made up of forms. Simple shapes is what makes up a complex shape. 
So you're going to be doing, let's say, an oval right here in the middle. And again, you just want to kind of sketchy sketch. Really loose is better because you're not trying to be perfect here. We're going to be changing this whole piece when it's painted over. So no, um, there's no need to be a perfect drawing when it's supposed to be a painting because the painting is going to cover up all of these lines and so there's just really no reason to fret over it. So just quickly do what you can. I did my oval and I did another oval up here on the very top left corner. If you want your turtle facing that way, just keep in mind then put that over here. Um, then you're going to add in a big circle right there for his eye. And as you already see, I've created kind of like a little smiley right there. Again, these are just beginning sketches, nothing fancy. I decided I think his shell needed to have a little bit more curve than it did. Like this. So you see I'm kind of keeping it on this diagonal line. It's good to keep, um, I like to have a diagonal line when I'm starting out just to keep me in alignment with the animal's um, body. So think of a, a little, little banana over here on the left, and then you're gonna have another big banana over here on the right. Since it's closer to you, his right flipper is closer to you, it's going to be bigger. Um, the perspective is a lot closer. So that is why our little one over here is so tiny because it's further away, and this one over here is a lot bigger because it's so much closer to us. And then adding in the shell here, it's a nice kind of like a wave, like think of an S on its side stretched out. So starting at the neck, and you can use sound effects. Sound effects are awesome. I use them all the time. They're really fun and playful, and I just think it's a part of the art making process. And then for his little back legs, they're literally going to be, I like to think of them kind of like little misformed avocados. <laughs> um, and one's going to be in the front, and then the other's going to be behind, or just like this. All right. So maybe it'll be a couple little things that will change. But you see, again, that we weren't trying to be perfect here. We were just trying to get our little turtle in. And I know this is maybe kind of quick, but if you're watching this, the, when you're watching this, if you, it helps you to go slower and see it step by step and look at it and study it, please feel free to do that. I recommend it. Um, but now we're ready to go ahead and move on. So we're good with the sketching. Put your pencil away. You won't need it again. Okay, so now we're going to be starting our painting process. Um, we're going to do the big flat brush to start with. And this is just to kind of fill in our turtle, um, kind of do the background a little bit, get it in there, show you how to do this kind of impressionistic pop art technique. Uh, I always like to start with filling in the background and then doing the turtle, but you can do either in this particular painting um, because we're not trying to do a detailed background. If we're doing a detailed background, do the background first, 100%. So we are going to use yellow. And let me get my big old brush with a nice layer of water. All right, so I'm adding quite a bit of water, as you can see here. Just little dabs, lots of little dabs, kind of making it like a little puddle. So we're treating our acrylic paint kind of like a watercolor. And then you see mine's gonna start dripping over here. But this is just for the consistency of painting much more um, fluid and much more impressionistic and airy and soft. So this gives you a lot of flexibility. So I like to just kind of put a few patches here and there and then I got a load up water on my brush and you dab just like this and you want it to drip. Just keep laying on water. Keep laying on water. There we go. So whenever you want to make drips and make it kind of like fluid and watery, you just keep layering on water until you get your uh, desired drip. And I'm going to put it maybe a little bit right here. So you see I'm kind of doing this like cross hatching, which is actually more of a uh, 
technically it's more of a, a graphite technique. It's cross hatching where you do these X's like this, except doing it with the paint. It's actually, you can get some really fun effects. And it's really kind of this airy look. All right, so now we got that. Now we're going to make our teal color. Now teal is actually super easy to make. You use green, phthalo green, and white. You mix those two together and boom, you get this awesome teal color. It's perfect. It's like literally don't have to do anything else. Again, we're going to layer on lots of water. We want it to be kind of watercolory. And then we're going to pat in a couple areas. And then keep in mind whenever you're using this color, whenever you start mixing it in with your yellow, you're going to get a really pretty green. It's going to be like a seafoam green kind of color. So if you like that and you want to blend, feel free to start just blending your little heart away. But if you're kind of wanting to keep it a little bit more airy and um, not have quite so much green, then just keep these colors a little bit more separate. See, I want to have two drops right here. Ooh, yeah, so you see? So it's really fun. And then obviously since this is why we're doing the background first is so we're getting all of our paint in. It's really fun. Um, and, but then we also don't have to worry about drippy, dripping all over our turtle later on, which some of the drips can actually look really cool going over, but I wouldn't necessarily say they're totally necessary, but um, it's a lot of fun still. And then if you want to feather out, this is one last thing before we move on. If you want to feather out your color a little bit, I call it feathering is like fading it. Um, I like to use pure white and start with the white outside of the color and work your way into the color. And you're going to have to clean your brush probably quite a bit, but that's how you get a nice soft transition into the white so it's maybe not quite so harsh so just like that Just like that. All right, so after that, we are all done with our big brush. Now we're gonna move on to the second brush. It's going to be the medium flat brush. Now with the medium flat brush, you're gonna actually let all your drippy drips dry before you move on. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what you're gonna do next so you don't have to wait. Um, so this is going to be where you start to add in your turtle's color, which I like to call color blocking. So color blocking is where you fill in all your white, um, get your base dark color, dark is important here, um, so that you can have a good contrast at the end. Because I like to work from darks to lights with this acrylic paint because whenever you add highlight after highlight after highlight, you get a lot of contrast. Um, and then a lot of emphasis on details and things like that. So that's why we like to do color blocking with dark colors first and then progressively after layer after layer after layer you get lighter and lighter and more detailed. So we're going to fill in our turtle shell with a mix. It's going to be turquoise. It's going to be green, phthalo green and phthalo blue together. And you're going to get this pretty turquoise color and see how pretty that is. I love this color. It's one of my favorites, especially as a base. So you see how I'm holding my brush is allowing for different techniques. So if I hold it flat like this, like I'm painting like this, it's what I call broadside. So that's filling in large swaths of my painting like this. 
Now, if I want to have what I call skinny side and I want to do a line, a fine line or a detail, like say I want to go down the edge of this turtle shell, I hold it like this, like I'm facing it towards you. I hold it to the canvas like this and follow the line like this. And you can go fast or slow. Sometimes if you go too slow, you'll start to get the shake in your hand. So I almost recommend to go a lot faster than you maybe you're more comfortable with. But there's no problem because this is acrylic paint. And so if we make an oops, it can easily be fixed, friends. Acrylic paint is super forgiving. It's a great learning, um, great learning medium, I would say, for any approaching artwork if you're wanting to paint specifically. And I just really love it. Super responsive and just a lot easier to pick up than some of the other, medi um, other mediums. So you see, I'm basically outlining all of my drawing or whatever part of the drawing it is that I wanted to keep. It's important there. Like this, I'm filling it in. And I like to go ahead and fill in where his little, what I like to call it the mask, he's going. And now for his more light areas, like in here, we're going to be using our orange and our yellow and a little bit of our magenta. And we're going to get kind of this really cool um, brown tan color. And we're only going to use this a little bit, just like on the bottom side for his shadow. And then we're going to go over with pure yellow. And maybe a little bit of orange in there. Going to be for our brights. Like I said, this is not the bright color that you're going to see at the end. We want to have it dark in the beginning because it gives us lots of contrast later on. So now I'm using a little bit of mixes of white in there with our yellow and our orange. Just filling in, having a good time. It's okay if you lose some of your lines, it's gonna happen. It's not a problem. I will help you find your lines in just a bit. So now we have our base of our turtle in. Still got a couple little things like up here in the eye that we gotta take care of, but nothing too much. So what we need to do is let this guy dry. So let's say give it a 10 minute break. 
get up, go walk around outside, go give your mom a call. <laughs> She'd love that. Um, maybe catch a catch an article, but get up and get away from your painting because it really helps to take a break multiple times during this whole art process. Because um, if you don't, then you're just going to get frustrated sometimes when things don't turn out quite as well as you'd like. So take that time for yourself.